talk about is the most obvious and perhaps the most commonly proposed solution to negative externalities of consumption, and that is corrective taxes. A corrective tax is meant to increase the marginal private cost, or simply the marginal cost in this case, to reduce the supply and raise the price. This, of course, leads to a smaller quantity demanded. A corrective tax would have the clear effect of raising the marginal cost to alcohol producers. So we could say this would be our supply equals marginal cost with a tax, causing the price to rise and reducing the quantity demanded. So there would be a tax burden placed on consumers and producers of alcohol, but overall there would be an improvement in total welfare because this welfare loss would be eliminated as the quantity decreased to QSO. A corrective tax may create a loss of consumer and producer surplus in the market for alcohol, but overall society would be better off because tax revenue would be generated. You remember from our earlier lessons, this would be the price with the tax, and there would be an area of tax revenue represented by the purple rectangle created, resulting from a corrective tax on alcohol or any other good that creates negative externalities. And instead of there being a deadweight loss, which in our government intervention unit was represented by this triangle. That would not be a deadweight loss, rather that would be an increase in total welfare because in fact what we've done is eliminated the deadweight loss that already existed from the overconsumption of alcohol. Regulations may also be used. Government can regulate and limit the consumption of a harmful good. When we look at some examples of other goods that create negative externalities of consumption in just a minute, we can talk about how regulation can be used to limit the consumption or production of a good. Legal limits or bans. Think about how the government regulates alcohol consumption. Age restrictions. There's a legal drinking age in this case. This is a way to limit the demand for alcohol and make sure that the market size is smaller and the equilibrium quantity is closer to the socially optimal quantity. There's some market-oriented approaches as well. Negative advertising to raise awareness about the harms of a good's Consumption could help reduce demand. These are just some of the possible solutions to negative consumption externalities. Corrective taxes raise the marginal cost of producing the good, reducing the supply, and reducing the quantity demanded. Regulations can limit how much of a good is produced or consumed. Legal age limits or bans. These are simple ways to reduce the market size. And negative advertising can help reduce demand for harmful goods. So we've got our graph here. We've shown how the consumption of a good creates negative spillover benefits, in other words, costs, imposed on third parties not involved in that good's production or consumption. This means that the equilibrium quantity will be greater than the socially optimal quantity, and there will be a welfare loss resulting from the overconsumption of the good. The solution that we illustrated was a corrective tax, which creates tax revenue, outlined in purple, but eliminates the deadweight loss rather than creating a deadweight loss as in the case of taxing a good that does not create negative externalities. So what are some other examples of goods that create negative externalities of consumption? First of all, I want to introduce a new term here. There is another name for goods that create negative externalities of consumption, and that is demerit goods. Demerit goods are activities or goods that create spillover costs as a result of their consumption. That's what we've shown here. In fact, drinking is really what harms a third party, not alcohol itself. So drinking too much is really the behavior or the activity that we would be analyzing in this graph. Driving itself creates negative costs on third parties in the form of traffic, pollution, accidents, etc. So you could say that driving a private automobile is a demerit good. Cars themselves could be considered demerit goods because too many cars on the road create lots of problems for society as a whole, and not just for drivers, but for everybody. Tobacco is a classic example of a demerit good. In fact, smoking tobacco is more what we're talking about here. We've got secondhand smoke, which imposes costs on people who aren't even smokers. So heck, secondhand smoke reduces the health of people who may never even smoke a cigarette themselves. In many countries, guns and violent crime resulting from guns could be considered a demerit good. Of course, governments regulate gun ownership, sometimes limiting gun ownership, sometimes setting ages at which people can buy guns. Guns, the violent crimes re resulting from gun use could be considered a negative externality of consumption and a demerit good. Another example would be marijuana. 
In many countries, marijuana is still illegal, but in many places in America in particular, it has now become illegal, but it's heavily regulated and taxed to reduce the negative externalities of marijuana's consumption. Other activities like littering and not recycling. These are things that might be regulated and made illegal. There might be fines associated with littering. There might be fines associated with not recycling things that could be recycled. These are all demerit goods. These are activities that could create a spillover cost on society as a whole. There are many other activities I could add to this list. Anytime a goods consumption creates negative consequences for people not involved in that goods consumption, it is considered a demerit good. There is a negative externality of consumption. As we've shown in this lesson, a negative consumption externality can be illustrated by showing the social benefit line below or inside the private benefit. There are negative social benefits or costs imposed on society as a whole. Corrective taxes, regulations, legal limits or bans, negative advertising, these are all ways to reduce demand or increase the cost, the marginal cost, of the goods that create negative externalities of consumption. One other method I could add here is subsidizing healthier or less harmful substitutes. We know that a substitute good, if the price of substitutes were to fall, then demand for these harmful goods would decrease. So we can add that to our list of ways to reduce the consumption of demerit goods. Here we go. One step back.